Banner Navic visited link list item. Cart. Internal link. Cart. Navigation. Delivery. Delivery. What happened? I just hit, I just hit delivery. What happened? Or. Carry out. No. Or. Heading one. <laughs> First of all, before we begin, make sure to hit like, watch through the whole video because this is a very important topic and share it around and spread it. All right, so I'm Gary Simon and that was my silly skit, but it's something that's really demonstrating what probably happens countless times every day when it comes to people all around the world who have vision issues uh, and have to rely on the use of those screen readers, which is basically just an audio readout of user interfaces when they're trying to use websites and apps. So here we have an article from theverge.com entitled, Domino's asked the Supreme Court to shut down a lawsuit requiring its website to be accessible to blind people, which sounds kind of absurd. Um, but hang with me because we're going to read through some of this article. I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions. And also, uh, if you are a front end developer, as I am, um, where you should go from here, because this certainly has implications going forward in the future and it can affect you uh, and the, the businesses. If you are a freelance developer or if you're working for a business and you've created their site or app, it could have implications for them as well. So Domino's, which is the leading US pizza chain, is currently waging a legal battle so that it does not have to make its websites accessible to the blind. So the case, which began three years ago, as a lawsuit by a blind U.S. resident, Mr. Robles, may go all the way to the Supreme Court, CNBC reports. And the eventual result could become a landmark decision over the rights of people with dis disabilities and the responsibility of companies to retrofit mobile apps and websites for accessibility. So uh, very big stuff. If it makes its way to the U.S. Supreme Court and they will hear the case, and depending on how they rule, this could be a whole new, you know, the EU GDPR uh, 2.0, and I, I think it would be um, even bigger than that. So at the core of the case is Domino's insistence that it should not have to make its website, the predominant platform for ordering pizza from its physical stores, accessible to people with visual impairments. Um, specifically, Domino's is contesting Robles' claim that Title III of the ADA covers mobile apps or websites, which effectively did not exist in the form when the ADA was passed in 1990. And then, of course, uh, Robles alleged that the ADA does cover the web and software, so as long as the business contains physical locations in the U.S. and is soliciting customers over the Internet. The federal court agreed, uh, so that was some time ago. Um, but now Domino's is arguing against that judgment, and the company petitioned the Supreme Court to weigh in with a 30 five page document designed to get the court to accept the case. We're almost done with this, but I want to read just a final couple tidbits here. In the document, Domino lays out its argument claiming the cost of accessibility requirements may run into the millions and the rules around what is accessible and what is not have yet to be decided. And the company is concerned the ruling as it stands now could result in an inconsistent enforcement that results in high cost to businesses. Um, we'll lay it, we'll end it here just for a second. Businesses and nonprofits have uh, no interest in discriminating against potential customers or other individuals who happen to have disabilities, but these suits put their targets in an impossible situation unless this court steps in now. Defendants must retool their websites to comply with Title III without any guidance on what accessibility in the online environment means for the individuals with a variety of disabilities covered by the ADA. Okay, so basically, it sounds like they, they definitely do have legitimate concerns that would concern me as well, depending on how the government decides to implement these rules if they actually ended up doing so. My hope would be that if they do actually rule that, you know, websites have to start, websites and apps have to start adhering to some of these uh, accessibility standards, that they do so in a way that's not going to harm uh, small business owners and really screw them over. Because as it mentions, um, Domino's is far from the only company facing down a lawsuit that requires website to accommodate people with disabilities, according to CNBC. The number of lawsuits over inaccessible websites jumped to 58% last year over 2017 to more than 2,200. 
Um, and a vast majority of the suits have been filed by a group of just 10 attorneys. So you can see how it's kind of starting to get ugly in that realm. And it's not out of the realm of possibility if this is just a, if these are small mom and pop sh you know, businesses who hired some local developer who knew nothing about accessibility, uh, how it could potentially cost them a lot of money if there are fines associated with it. It could put people out of business. It could uh, result in them having to fire people or increase the, the, the cost of their, their services and all that. So I wouldn't be just a fan of saying, hey, government, go ahead and do whatever you want. You know, it really needs to be implemented correctly so that, you know, it's, it's a win-win for both the people who have these vision impairments and also the businesses who have to adhere to them so there's it's not insanely complex. Um, so going forward, no, no matter what your opinion is, whether you think there should be a law for it or there shouldn't be, I here's my personal take on it. It doesn't matter because if you want to maximize the number of customers that your business or your client's businesses receive, it only makes sense to have an accessible website. And so that means going forward, I would say starting today or as soon as possible, if you are a front-end developer and this is going to be your responsibility, is to start researching accessibility. I just uploaded a video two days ago, uh, but I definitely would say that you should probably get started right here, which is the WCAG, which is the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines Overview page at w3.org. Now, there's a lot of documents here, and it would probably get pretty daunting uh, if you tried to read through all of them and tried to take it all in one sitting. You're not going to understand it in one sitting. But the area I would probably focus on right here is the WAI ARIA. And so ARIA is an acronym of Accessible Rich Internet Applications. And in my little example at the beginning of the video, I, those issues could have been solved if the correct ARIA tags, which are HTML attributes, were implemented in that website. And so I, like I mentioned, I did a video tutorial on this just a couple days ago. There's a lot of different ARIA tags and concepts to understand different use cases. My suggestion would be if you currently have a project or you have other established projects where, you know, they're, they're serious projects, you have visitors coming into them, uh, just tackle them one at a time and you can get a screen reader for your desktop as a developer. They're free. There's a bunch of them. This is one of them, which is one of the most populars, and it's called uh, NVDA. Uh, you can also get a Chrome extension, as I covered before, called Chrome Vox, V-O-X, and you can visit your site as it would appear, so <laughs> appear, no pun intended, I uh, or it would sound to a person with vision disabilities, all right? Um, and then from there, just take a look at the use cases. If you have certain uh, JavaScript-based UI components that are uh, changing the UI in some shape or way, uh, and it's not working right when it comes to the screen readers, nobody who's you know blind or who uses these screeners are gonna be able to use them, then just go ahead and just type in HTML ARIA tutorial and then maybe also add it to whatever you're working on. Maybe it's a carousel of sorts. You know, how should your, your ARIA tags be um, implemented so that a person who is using a screen reader would be able to navigate through it and access that content ultimately. So let me know what you think here in the comments and give a like. You know, do you think there should be a law of some sorts that enforces accessibility for websites and apps? Now, going forward, I'm going to be covering accessibility a lot more because I really believe it's important, uh, especially if you're a front-end developer to implement those tags correctly and you're utilizing all the various semantic elements and also as a designer as well, which is something I've covered before in terms of ensuring that your contrast and your colors and your scale is all up to par for best accessibility. All right, I'm Gary Simon. I'll see you guys soon. Again, make sure to subscribe. Goodbye.